I don't know. So, Yaren and T-Flame, uh, let's talk about this while we wait here for a little bit. Good call. Uh, what, what can we expect to see from both of these players? Wow, it's funny, with your and, and this is something I only know because I had to play them last SCL and Diamond, uh, what you find is a very disciplined, clean spy. There's not a lot of crazy stuff. It's not very OP-like. There aren't a lot of rushes for that matter, but there also aren't a lot of overt mistakes. It's really like make really good, genuine soft tail progress, really pick your spots on the hard tail, and just play a really st solid sniper. The general thing with your and is if they, they're going to play well almost every time. The only time you can really get them to make mistakes is on a handful of venues that they have a little bit of trouble with. Sometimes Gallery has given them trouble. They had a weird lapse on Courtyard against Magician last season, and obviously the occlusion venues. But when you don't play those kind of venues, when you play like any of the other 10, they're just going to play solid up and down. If you play really well, you'll win. If you play badly, you'll lose, is basically the way it goes <laughs> with your end. Well, there's some players that's not the case. I've had matches where I played badly, but my opponent played worse, right? Uh, that is a thing that happens with most players, is that there's variance. Your end has less variance in play quality. I think than most players. T Flame, uh, I don't know what to make of T Flame because T Flame has been ascendant the last six months, gone from a upper intermediate player to like low level expert. I think in just the course of a few months. So I don't know who's going to win here. Well, it's funny you mentioned the sort of swinginess. T Flame to me has always struck me as sort of a player who plays the level of his competition. Mm. And against really good players like Yerand, we see, as you say, sort of transcendent play. Uh, but T Flame also has lost to some players that really he shouldn't be losing to. Uh, I forget who it was, but for example, in the first round of the tournament of position, T-Flame lost a match that was surprising to basically everybody. Yeah, that does happen. And you're right. I think you're right about the variants. Looks like we have the draft, by the way, but I think you've I think you've described T-Flame very accurately uh, for that matter. And But I will say, I think their sniper is just better now, better than it was. And that's what normally happens when a pretty good sniper spy combo takes that leap with Sniper, suddenly they're a dangerous player, almost overnight it seems like, and that seems to be the case what happened with T-Flame here, on the cusp of a possible finals matchup with Opie. It's going to be one of these two in just an hour or so. Look at this, Joran chooses House Party, T-Flame chooses Waving Through a Window, T-Flame bans Veranda, Joran bans Ballroom. We are going to start on Redwoods. There will be no Ballroom here, no Veranda, but there will be Redwoods. T-Flame is going to spy first, playing as the man we call, well, Pencil Stash, Walt Disney. There's some arguing about it because, well, I don't know if kids who play this game know who Walt Disney was or <laughs> what he looked like. They know it's a company. I don't know if they know it's a person, but whoever it is, it's going to be the spy T-Flame on Redwoods in three, two, one, playing it. Here we go. All right. T-Flame with a little bit of a bug path does not take it and goes straight to bar things to start things off. Um, T-Flame spy generally strikes me as pretty uh, methodical similar to year ends, but with occasional flashes of just crazy stuff. Right, yeah, and I think that's good to have that little crazy in your back pocket, sort of, to pull it out and let the freak flag fly just a little bit, just so that people know you might do it. Doing something just occasionally is valuable in and of itself, but particularly against any opponent who might study you, and I dare say Yoran will do just that. We do have this drink in our hand. We're sipping it at the windows, but we're going to finally make our way over to the seduction target, who is Smallman. Again, pick Smallman as your seduction target, and it guarantees they're not cast. That's why he is disproportionately a chosen seduction target. That is going to be a white test, though, to start off. Uh, it's not like the other match at all, is it? I was getting really spoiled on those early green tests. <laughs> no, I think none of these players have the reputation of being green test monsters the same way that Opie and Screwloose do. Um, I think Yaran notable for having one of the lower green tests in the upper echelons of SCL, in fact. Um, so we can't maybe expect to see the same sort of green test, just two flirts, all game, all set. But both of these players will make up for it in other ways, of course. Tiefling, though, taking this very, very slowly thus far. Well, T-Flame has not actually played a ton of Redwoods competitively, at least not in SEL, but more in the Cups and tournaments since. There have been a few of them, too, and certainly getting into it there. Uh, still just has this white flirt to start. We are still just sitting next to our seduction target. The delegate timer has run out, and so is the cooldown timer. Both of them almost at exactly the same time. We care about one of those, but not the other. It's going to be another white test. What is going on? I thought spies always hit green tests on their flirts. Two-thirds of the way done now. Selection target has not moved, but neither have we, and neither has our mission progress since. Still no missions technically done, and a little under two minutes left. We are going to try to actually check a box here. It's going to be double agent. Contact the double agent. We have joined with them. It's a pretty decent time to do it. Not great, but I don't know if it's going to get much better either. T-Flame, though, is hesitating before taking this contact. Yeah, really just waiting and hoping that things will improve themselves. Maybe waiting for somebody. I think we're following Smallman, maybe waiting for Smallman to get in the conversation. Yep, Smallman gets in and we fire off the green test immediately and we split going we into split. the statue. Split going into the statue and I don't know if we're fishing for a low light there. Splits can be surprisingly effective. It's hard to get 
high confidence low lights on redwoods because of those trees you don't have that mental snapshot that the sniper benefits from so so often that is one inspect done two-thirds of the flirt seduction target all alone standing across from seek this is my favorite sitcom these two by the way i want them to share an apartment in new york city or something we're going to be right next to them there's plenty of space we're going to wait a few seconds as spies like to do and we are going to hit another white test it's a three flirt contact is done seduce is done inspect part of the way there we know the split has not worked though we do not have a low light we're going to go to another front statue it's going to be a three flirt and a three statue inspect maybe two very hard to get away with that unless we're thinking about swapping or something there's a green test we get on the inspect where it doesn't matter two inspects done and only about 35 seconds left is it going to be inspect swap with a third statue visit it feels like it has to be with this little time left we don't have time for purloin unless we do a crash bug or something we're going to the far statue this is the swappable statue the one most hidden by the trees but yaran i'm sure we'll be keeping it on statue on camera here here comes the inspect and now here comes the swap. It's very, very visible. And the camera swings over and the shot comes off immediately. Urand, great sniper that he is, center mass, hits them right in the middle. And that just, I think, got away from us just a little bit. An inspect swap earlier, maybe, somewhere else. But keep in mind, here's the problem. We talked about this before. When you go to the single statue, you can't inspect swap with a second visit. It really limits your options late in the game. And I think having to three flirt, cooldown timer, all three of them white, that might have hurt us, too. Forced us into a bit of a corner there at the end. You say you can't swap on the second visit. That was the third visit, to be clear. Right, right. That's the thing. They had to go to a visit in between if they wanted to do inspect swap because you can't pick up a center statue because there is no center statue. You can't inspect swap with just two visits unless you start there. All right, so Yaren goes yeah. up one nothing here with that sniper win. I'm enamored with the statues. It's such an underrated part of the Redwood strategy is if you go to that first single statue, it really funnels you towards a certain kind of outcome at the end. And yes, your Rand now trying to answer uh, one nothing here, looking to go up 2 nothing on Redwoods right off the bat. Boy, playing his wheels, this would be a really solid advantage. And for a player like your Rand, who we talked about, who doesn't have as much variance, when they get that lead, they can just grind you down. That's going to be the goal. And it starts right here. Playing his wheels in 3, 2, 1, playing it. How would you finish? Would, would, do you think that doing just sort of a book inspect and then a last second microfilm slam, would that be a better finish there? No, I think that's the thing. We were we were funneled into our choice there by going to that early single statue. Um, and as particularly the second one um, there at the end. It really limits you. I don't think it's obvious when you do it necessarily that you have to end the game a certain way now and that your options are very limited. But the die was cast very early in that game, unfortunately. And I think it's something the spies need to be very aware of, where that first inspect comes from. If it's not one of the books, they're going to have fewer options late in the game. Urand uh, does not want to go to those books to get a flirt done early. Would rather get a contact done instead. It's a pretty decent time, actually. We're going to knock out our seduction target, potentially, who's visiting statues. And that's not ideal, but you'll take it, I think, for Redwoods. Urand just hanging out in this conversation that wants one more person to join. Will they? Sorry, does. And we contacted just as it's happening. It's going to be a white test, though. And another person leaves. This is going to be at least four low lights let's see how many of them the sniper gets one two three three low lights pretty much par for the course for redwoods but there were two full conversations with an sda not bad for your and gets the contact instead of the seduce early in the game yep looks like t-flame is just doing standard statue highlights here uh crediting people with inspects and worth knowing that we of course do not have any credit for that yet we're going to step into the window pad here and we're going to add time it's a green test I think it's a good choice. I think we didn't get any flirt done early. We waited a while for the contact, and Uran understands, as a good spy often does. They see ahead in the game to when they're going to need time later. They take the time ad now when it's less suspicious. I think that's a great idea. We are going to go back to the statues we eschewed at the beginning because we didn't want to get that early statue visit to get the flirt. We have to do it now because the seduction target is not settling in conversation, but it is a green test, and we do go to a single statue. We break animation at the very end, heading into a three cycle because we were getting that flirt. The cooldown timer is still not down because the seduction target did not go very far, but it is down enough that we can join them here to the right and there goes the cooldown timer chance to two flirt right here this could be a big moment determining how we finish here it comes it is another green test there we go and we might get a nice little bit of a b testing here about the way those white flirts forced t flame into a certain kind of a rush finish in the other game but will not force Shirand here who has a time ad and two green flirts already and Yaren just going for the immediate statue visit, but the double agent is going to block us we're not going to be able to finish the inspects right here on this visit 
that's not great, but I think it might not be too suspicious if we go right back to green or right back to red. It gives them one more chance to notice. We can wait longer at books, though. We don't have to worry about breaking the cycles at books as much because it's not as noticeable and not as well known, and that is exactly what can happen. No, we're not even trying to finish. We had several seconds where we could have done it. We're going to do it while we put the book down. That is such a long pause. I don't know about that choice. I think that's just a mistake. You had several seconds to start it, but we were determined not to. But the inspects are done. I don't know if we're a suspect or not, but there's three missions done and a minute and a half left, and the clocks, in just a moment, will be synchronized again. But we're moving around so fast. We just stop in that conversation for just a moment and then go immediately to books. I don't know if Yaron is planning a direct purloin here, uh, hoping to frame somebody... But we're going to be doing some sort of purloin action here. That's for sure. Yeah, that's going to be the final mission. And uh, he does delegate about 77% of the time, at least in competitive, Uran does. And that's pretty par for the course. Most spies delegate most of the time. But on Aquarium and SEL, it was two for three last time. So we'll see. It's going to be a, a reject walk away. It's going to be the delegate cheese, as we call it. And I don't know if we have enough cover for it. And yep, T-Flame is all over it before it's even been delegated to. The party's narrowed down enough. And I just don't think we had any cover for that. No, and T Flame is one of those players who watches etiquette things like the converse or the walk away from bar very, very carefully. Those are the type of things where if you're a suspect and T Flame is already watching you, he will notice. Yep, that's how it goes sometimes, and that's why T Flame Sniper has been dangerous. He's added a couple things to the toolbox, and uh, sometimes he'll hit you over the head with him. Uh, and that's what happens here at 1 1 on Redwoods. Now heading into Gallery. I mentioned this before the match started as an area where, a venue rather, where Uran has had a little bit of trouble as Sniper, and here's a T Flame's opportunity to take advantage of it, spying as Leopard in 3 2 1 playing it. Gallery, I go back and forth on. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. It is an acquired taste either, either way, just like okay. a lot of that modern. Art up there. Well, there's a white purloin immediately. This is not how you test a sniper who's had trouble holding shots on gallery. There's the purloin. We're walking away. Damon Lolit. That's helpful. Here comes a highlight for the twin. I have to think this was seen, but I'm not actually seeing any reaction for the lights yet. There it is. There's the reaction. We're going to get proximity low lights out front. I think only one or two, though. We are not that confident. This might have actually worked. Yeah, I don't think we're a huge suspect for this, even though we're holding the drink. I don't think we've really been noticed or suspected for having had a hand in this purloin. And Yaren seems really, really confused. He was taking double agent lowlights while that purloin came off and just did not see it clearly. Wow. I think we've gotten away with this for the most part, and now it could just be a soft tail finish, but that's the kind of thing you get shot if Yaren knows they're behind. They're going to have to adjust on the fly here. This is very, very interesting. Uh, we did zoom in on that list a little bit at the beginning, but I think we did so without actually looking at it because we double zoomed and double taked, I think, right after that. And that's when it was seen, and we only got a few low lights from it. I count five total. And for a purloin on gallery early in the game, you'll absolutely take that. White test on the seduce out front, by the way, 33%. And oh boy, you can see those white tests on the flirts maybe already creeping in towards a potentially disappointing loss for T Flame again. Because if we don't finish those on gallery, it can come back to bite you. Yeah, and T-Flame not taking advantage of that early mission progress, just taking things slow. And even that first flirt was across the conversation circle, only 33%. I'm worried that if T-Flame lets too much time slip away, he'll let Yara narrow the party too much with pathing lowlights and just end up trying to do soft tails and just really, yep, here comes a highlight for the statue visit. Uh, this also has a print on it. Ooh, not bad. This gives us some way to complete without being shot you know, from a jumpy sniper who knows they missed a purloin. And these other statue visitors are very, very welcome because if three or four people are potentially finishing inspector doing soft tail progress post purloin, it's much more likely we'll get a held shot than if only one of them is. The sniper might say, I know I'm behind. I'm going to shoot whoever's finishing. There's another white test for T-Flame. It is at this painting pad. 67%. We're going to go to another statue immediately. This is the one that I believe White Dress was just at. One of the, one of the people, at least. It might have been Ponytail, one of the three. Cooldown timer already. Inspect coming through. That mission is about to be completed. Here it goes. Two missions done. Seduce one flirt away. Our seduction target is taking a briefcase, though, and that could keep them busy for a little while. A little over a minute left, and we're still not going to have a fourth mission. you got to imagine it's going to be fingerprint at this point, but it could be contact. I think T-Flame post Perlone would like to avoid that, though. Yeah, T-Flame in a position where, in theory, a silent game is possible. If we can get one more flirt and find one more fingerprint, we can get this done without the banana bread coming off. But with nobody cooperating at all, this is going to be really, really difficult. The ambassador oh. has to go touch something, put that briefcase down or something to give us that fingerprint. And we have to go finish this flirt right now. Our double, our selection target is out here at the other conversation circle, and we can squeeze in and get that done. But then we still have to oh. find that last mission. The double agent is here. We can just finish right here, right now. 
we fo- got just enough room. It was a bit of a squeeze. We stop talk right afterwards. And it's very on screen. Uranda zoomed out, is on, sees the stop talk, hears the contact, and takes the shot. I think fingerprint would have been the way to go there, as it turns out, because that shot came off very quickly after the contact. Yeah, Yerand, instant shot. Yerand must have seen something there. Maybe more on top of that Perlin than we thought, because no hesitation whatsoever with that shot coming off. Yeah, well, it's entirely possible it was just the only person who finished in specs that was still in the suspect pool. And then when you're watching late, you see the stop talk. It was a very quick stop talk. Even if you weren't really watching the rest of the conversation, I think it would have been very easy to determine that there's no way they were interrupted already. I'm not sure what it was. Might have been aggressive, might have been confident. I'm going to say somewhere between the two. But either way, it's going to be Iran up two to one. All snipers so far, Iran spying on gallery as general in three, two, one, playing it. Very different from the previous match where spies were winning left and right. <laughs> Very much so, yes. Um, now, Yerand, I'm interested to see what happens here because, as you say, Yerand really doesn't have a reputation for doing sort of tricky spy things. And Gallery is a venue where just conventional spy can be really, really tough to get spy wins by just based on the field of view for snipers. Yeah, it absolutely can. Yerand, by the way, favors about Perlo and Bug is pretty much equally a spy on Gallery, so you really can't lean into one or the other. And most people do have a clear preference on each venue, but Yerand has that mission spread, and as I said, just plays really solid, really even, and that shows in the mission choices as spy. No progress here early, though, as our seduction target is staring at a painting, and that means you need to see where they're going to land, and it looks like it might be all the way out front, which would be very, very unfortunate. This is what you want to avoid on Gallery. Yerand taking a drink in the meantime, maybe... Well, there's a fingerprint on it, but already you figure running a little low on time. We already had a safety off here on Pearl, was that? Uh-oh, this is the downside of watching for etiquette stuff is that sometimes you get your si- your teeth sunk into a weird AI and you tunnel on them, and this would not be the game you want to do that. Your man does get a real. High- Oh boy, interesting. But several people, yeah, several people left, and it looks like Uran got them all. So if the safety is off on one of them, and they're already suspected for a potential contact, and look at this, White Dress is at the statue, T-Flame zooming in, looking for blinks. This, these, are compu- <laughs> these are computing cycles that you're using on an AI. This is the trade-off here, is that you're spending a lot of time watching someone who is a computer program, I'm afraid. We have gulped a drink in the meantime. Contact is done. One fingerprint is done. But no seduce, and Green Dress is at, I think, the same painting as before. This is very... Very, very difficult flirt-wise. Two minutes left. We are going to go for the briefcase, though, and finish fingerprint. That's going to be a soft tell done along with contact. No flirt progress yet. If we can get this, if we can hit a couple greens, particularly at this green shelf as the green general, let's do it all at once. Here we go. We're going to need them, though, with less than two minutes left. I don't think we can afford white tests here. We do We do still have a highlight. We're going to flirt after picking up the book, of course. It is a green. Half done. This could make up for lost time. 100 seconds left on the clock. Two and a half missions. Yaren's showing really good green test, putting a lie to my comment earlier about not being a green test monster. Yaren has been hitting those clutch greens when needed, uh, including on these flirts especially. That one green test could make a big, big difference in finishing this game. A minute 30 is not a lot of time left to do, but with one more flirt potentially needed, plus one more mission, including what may or may not be a completely hidden fingerprint game, Yaren is in really good shape here, I think. Oh, look at this seduction target. We have to chase them all the way out and squish into this conversation, and it's so, so noticeable. The seduction target has actually been extremely, extremely unfriendly this game. Yaren, I think, in a normal seduction target movement game, would be in a pretty good position here. They are not, we are not going to hit that green test. It's going to be a white. We're going to be at 84% with a minute left. If the seduction target had given us just an average amount of luck, I think we'd be on the precipice of victory already. But instead, we are running low on time, and I think we're a pretty big suspect. None of those other real contact highlights have done enough to get shot yet. And I think this game might be slipping away from us just a little bit, even if we got away with that fingerprint. All right. Well, let's see what the plan is here. We're sticking around here. We're requesting a drink. Maybe a purloin is in the offering. Can Yaron hit another clutch green? He can! Another clutch green comes off! Huge. It is on screen, and we are one of just a few suspects, so there's a decent chance we're going to be caught for this, but I think this is Joran's best shot with time winding down. Green Dress has not moved from out front. There's A spot is open in the conversation, but it's been taken. There's the purloin! There's the purloin! And the taker is Kane! And T-Flame does not see the fade, shoots the civilian, and Joran's green test purloin almost definitely is what did it. Great timing there, with two highlights actually next to each other in conversation, I think being watched... That is Yerand finally scoring a spy win in the fourth game of the match. It is three to one now. Wow. What a clutch green test. I mean, a white test there loses the game for us. That's about as binary as it gets in Spy Party, right? 
Yeah, in competitive, there's basically a 20-point gap between white and green purloin as to whether or not the spy wins. It's 40-something when they hit a white, 60-something when they hit a green, and those are the kind of margins you're living with at this level in the semifinals with two players like this. Uran now has that early lead that I mentioned, 3-1, to one, and if they play the way they normally play, they're just going to grind this out. But T-Flame might have something to say about it. We are still on gallery, and Uran can still struggle on it sometimes. T-Flame as a ponytail on gallery in 3 Two, one, playing it. Who has to shake this one out as Yaran breaks serve here to start with? We're going for the early flirt, but no, it's a banana bread instead with so many people out of the conversation. This is oh, disaster. No. That must be action priority, and T Flame is in serious, serious trouble here right off the bat. There it is. It's screw loose again, trying to flirt early on, but getting contact instead, and it costs them dearly, as you say. Seven low lights at the beginning of a gallery game traded for only contact. That is really bad for T Flame. And we white test the flirt as well. This is problematic to say the least. And it's just the kind of thing you can't do against your and when your and can whittle the party down one way or another, but particularly with hard low lights like this, that's when he gets you. That's when he catches you on the small stuff. This is the kind of game of attrition that you cannot play against your and because he will usually win it has a chance to cash in that spy win big time right here. If Tiefling doesn't get a little help from the party or pull off something really great as Spy, there's the cooldown on the flirt. It's another white test. These are definitely going to be hurting Tiefling's chances. There's so little time to pick your spots on hard tells or finish four soft tail missions when you can't get flirt done quick. Yeah, and look at this. More lowlights being found by Yaran between that banana bread and then finding like pathing things and etiquette things. Tiefling has an uphill uphill battle to climb here the only benefit maybe is that we're in like a hidden place in this conversation circle kind of hiding behind general fully occluded almost maybe if we can find a good purloin here that could pay dividends but other than that i mean we're just timer floating this out for a third flirt yeah, there are two tall men to our left, and that could absolutely help us if we get a reject chain going. One of them has left, however, and it's the glowing one, too, which is really unfortunate, but... We are... Oh, the seduction! There it is, finally done. We've sat here for quite a while to finish that, so that is two missions done, but it's two of the easier ones, potentially, at least. Certainly no hard tells, and this party is so, so narrowed down. We do pick up a briefcase. There's no print on it. I don't know if we're trying to lose heat or what, or if we thought there was a difficult. That's more likely, I think. We are going to go to statues here, though, with a minute 40 left, and you got to wonder if Inspect Swap is in the offering. It's going to be a fingerprint on this, too. I think we were trying to finish fingerprint one go if that briefcase had one on it. And fingerprint on the back statue as well that the Ambassador just put down. It's possible we could fingerprint Inspect right now and just finish right here, right now. But we're not going to. We're going to go outside instead, maybe try and cook those prints a little bit longer and lose some heat. This is the question. Does T-Flame want to wait to reduce heat, or do they not know that print is there? That's what we don't know yet, and we don't know if the sniper knows it either. Big moment of truth coming up with a minute left. Here we go. Are we heading into the statue? Sure looks like it. We bounce off a couple of people, and it looks like we know exactly what we want to do. That looks like a very deliberate move there to let that sit a little bit, but we are facing, back-facing the sniper while we finish fingerprint. We could be shot for a potential swap we can't see. This is very risky. This is not the one you want to be fingerprinting, but it's the one you have to. We don't get an inspect done in time because we get the fingerprint before, and the suspected double agent picks up the statue. We pick up a other statue that we picked up earlier. It's still back facing the sniper this is so suspicious but you hope you hope they can rule out the swap and you won't get shot for finishing inspect so late there's no indication we're about to get shot for this just a few seconds left moment of truth for your and t flame answers with a spy win three to two the soft tail game so so strong even against a sniper of the caliber of your and and your just must have missed a print that's the only explanation i can come up with yeah i think that's it we were hanging around behind that Tall gentleman in the back of the conversation, out of sight, out of mind, is worth a little something. Would you have guessed mission win after that action priority contact mistake at the beginning? I sure wouldn't have. Not against most snipers, definitely not against Uran, but T-Flame pulls it all the way back. And as you say, Uran probably just not on those prints. Maybe, maybe did lose heat for picking up the briefcase with nothing on it. Maybe Uran knew that. I don't know. Either way, I know T-Flame answered with a very big win there. Our first spy win is immediately followed by our second, and we're going to wrap things up very shortly in gallery. Look at this, Urand playing cowboy. Don't see that a lot. Not a popular spy. You might be about to find out why, though, if T-Flame has anything to say about it. In three, two, one, playing it. That is an absolutely huge win for T-Flame. We really can't overstate how important that could be in the context of this match. All right, with Bucks, we're doing an immediate book cheese right off the bat here. And Green to blue, just like that. No sign that it was seen whatsoever. That's one mission done already. Okay. Well, I don't know if you want to be bright pink while you're trying to look inconspicuous in the back of the venue, but this is where we spawned. Uran takes advantage of it. 
And as badly as the previous game started for T-Flame, that's how well it might have started here for your Rand. If T-Flame does not heavily suspect oh, that... We had two hits cancelled by the... Just getting sunshine on this one. That's not great. Not great at all. But you'll trade it for the microfilm and your Rand. Look at this. They already know. Yep, I want to press my advantage. I'm going to act like I got away with it because I'm not dead. We get a rote highlight. There's the first inspect. And at this point, it's going to be Dare T-Flame to potentially shoot for a soft tail finish and assume they miss something, which is a very hard thing to do if you're a good sniper, and T-Flame certainly is. Yep, definitely true. If the mission count is off, which we assume it is because no reaction to that microfilm cheese, then T-Flame is going to have such a hard time shooting here. We're trying to figure out our seduction target. It's just <laughs> re-waiting, not cooperating whatsoever so far this game, and it just goes right back in the conversation, <laughs> which is I unfortunately think full. Well, there we go. There's a spot right there. If we can get in here ne next to here. Oh, Kane goes right back. And we have to squeeze in awkwardly, but we might need to hit a green test now to catch up on this little bit. It's going to be a contact instead first. There it comes off several low lights. Four, five, six. That's actually not bad. Seven. Okay, now we're getting up there on gallery. That's not great, but with the hard tail already done, it looks very different. I'm just going to assume our seduction target is a librarian and is mad at us for putting the book back in the wrong place. Something like that. It is a white test on the flirt afterwards, by the way. So we're going to have to three flirt at minimum, but we've got two minutes left. One inspect down to go and two flirts, and Urand is not waiting up at all. We're going to go to a front-facing statue instead, so we're not suspected and shot by a jumpy sniper for a swap that did not come. Inspect will be completed right here, and then we can timer flirt our way to victory potentially if the seduction target is a little more amenable the rest of the way. We broke it! Did we break animation on that statue? Is that what we did? We threw this game away! Urand! Urand just throwing this game, maybe waiting for blinks that just weren't going to come! Okay, was this a straight mistake by Urand, or is this Urand, yes, knowing their opponent, worried about blinks, and causing an unforced error as a result in a game they were, I feel comfortable saying, going to win? T-Flame's reputation. We talk about reputation in the Spy Party community and how it can win or lose you games, and I think this is perhaps the clearest, starkest example of that happening right here. With the blinks. Oh my goodness. We were zoomed in too. We were zoomed in and we saw it and it was a snap motion. It was totally seen. Not enough else going on at the party to maybe get away with that slight animation break. If you haven't seen Spy Party before, yes, I want you to know this is what it's like. That tiny little hitch will lose you a game you are going to win. It is pulled back now. Three to three. And if you're T-Flame and you're looking at that replay, you're thinking, whoo. Okay, I don't know if I want to have to rely on that sort of thing again because I'm not sure it's going to bail me out next time. But again, reputation, as you say, might be what brought us that win. Tied at three now, going into Modern, T-Flame as the spy, as general, in three, two, one, playing it. Oh, okay. Heartbreaking, right? I mean, we tend to cheer for the spy and we tend to cheer for, let's say, people to win games rather than lose them. So just as casters, that is rough to see, even without a specific rooting interest. I'd be curious, if this were like football or baseball or something, and we had like a win probability tracker, just seeing the wild swings on that chart would have been nuts right there. It would have been. Hopefully someday we'll get something like that. T-Flame is hanging out at the bar. Not for flirt reasons. Often when you go into a giant bar pile up early on in a modern game, it's because you're going to flirt and grab a list or cheese a list or something. But T-Flame's doing neither. Just getting a drink. Has the purloin there. No bar highlights coming off or anything. I think these might be statue highlights. I haven't noticed yet. I've been too busy looking at the spy, which is more than I can say for the sniper because they haven't had any reason to. They're not doing anything. We are going to squeeze in next to the ambassador, though, with our drink hand. And I wonder if the idea was going to be to delegate to cast there, but the ambassador leaves anyway. We will be obligated to take this briefcase if we leave. Instead, we're going to contact first. It's going to be a green test. Will it be right into a possible delegate or briefcase? We'll find out in just a moment. Nothing has happened yet, though, and three low lights have come off. T-Flame playing this game slowly. Five. Like I said, T-Flame tends to be sort of a more deliberate spy in general. And we're seeing that again here. T-Flame is sort of letting things develop slowly, seeing what the party gives him. But really not paying attention much to the party. A lot of sort of cameras swinging around. And right now, the party is really quiet. Nobody has statues, little bar action. We're just going to go for this briefcase instead. We delegated the purloin, though, during that banana bread. It was the person on the other side of the ambassador. We did it right at the end, I think. This is really well-timed. It's near the end of the timer, and that could really help. We have a difficult fingerprint as well. Purloin's done, and I'm not sure if we've been noticed for this. That purloin was really threading the needle. It happened very late in the, in the timer, and that's when you get snipers. When they feel like a person is cleared from being able to purloin, and the purloin just comes off. When you thread that needle, it can really, really throw off even a very good sniper. 
first flirt comes in very late in the game, but that's because we've been doing other things. We have two missions done and two with partial progress, and they're both soft tails, though. But one of them fingerprint. Is T-Flame out ahead here? It's totally a question of whether or not this party's narrowed down from the Purloin or not. There's no indication from the lights whether or not that's the case, though. Yeah, that's definitely true. We have six low lights. Most of those were from the banana bread. Yerand is, again, known for taking sort of mental low lights on etiquette and pathing and things like that, but we're not seeing much of it right here. The only saving grace for Yeren may be just that we don't have more mission progress right now, but with a minute 50 left to go, over 100 seconds, T-Flame still has so much time to finish here. One more fingerprint can be found in any number of places if the Ambassador cooperates, and we're going to pick up another flirt right here, right now, it looks like. Here it comes. We're joining with our seduction target. We're pretty close, and we're just res resigned to another th three flirt, and boy, we've been talking about that all night with T-Flame. It's, it's almost been the difference in some of these games. Duran two flirting, T-Flame three flirting, and this one is a green, but it's when it doesn't help you. It's going to get you to 85% instead, so we are going to have to three flirt again. We have a little over a minute left. One more flirt, even a bad one, will get the job done in any fingerprint, and that would be the game, potentially. That's a fake. That's a fake. I think we might be trying to frame, maybe, the actual list taker, which would be twin, but I don't think they're in with an SDA, if that's the right one, the highlight one. No, and that was a known fake for us. We did it as the, the real double agent left. We knew that there, an SDA couldn't be in the conversation, so we knew that it was a fake for us. And that's all well and good, but no real reaction from Yerand. I'm not sure how much credit we were giving to other people there. Wow. Yeah, interesting choice. Throw a little chaff in the air while you're waiting anyway. There's the cooldown timer. There's the flirt. It's done. Three missions and one fingerprint. One more fingerprint from T-Flame, potentially picking the up the win and the lead. The Ambassador's not cooperating. The Ambassador's been sitting with the briefcase at his feet for more than a minute, I think, at this point. Oh, no. And we're picking up another drink. And if there isn't a fingerprint on this, it's just to kill time. Yeah, I mean... We're going to have to bug. I think we're going to have to bug. We're walking around the Ambassador without bugging. Instead, we're going to try to make them leave their briefcase. But it's going to take a few seconds. And then we have to fingerprint, which means there's almost definitely going to be overtime by the time our plan comes to fruition. There's a fake. Again, throwing more chaff in the air. It's a white test. The Ambassador has not left yet. There's a bug attempt in the aftermath. There's a bug attempt. And I don't think it was seen. It was a Twitch bug as the fake comes off. Are we going to get shot? We are as overtime starts. Your hand takes the shot just in time. I don't know if they saw the bug, but they were able to infer what was happening anyway no print left means your rand salvages the win wow we have seen razor thin margins coming out so far in this set already oh look at this i don't i don't know if we were close enough look at this the proximity we didn't chase the ambassador away from their briefcase so we had to fake into bug instead wow I like I the thought just no cover for that bug and ultimately even if it wasn't seen we were just so suspicious at that point yeah, and overtime, I think, does it. Overtime is a sort of, if nobody looks like they're finishing, you look around at mission sites, and who is it who's right out front next to the ambassador? It's this person. So even if you don't see the bug at all, you have seven or eight seconds, it looks like. Uh, oh, oh, close to ten, as a matter of fact. Uh, no, sorry, four. Four seconds. You have four full <laughs> seconds, which uh, I'm, I thought that was a point six, not a six. Uh, six point one seconds, the bug goes off, which means that if you're your and, even if you don't see the bug at all, you can probably suss out what would have happened. And there's been one person walking by the ambassador a lot late in the game. What I find really interesting, though, is that we just did this too late. If we don't go to bar there, we don't waste as much time and we can chase the ambassador away from their briefcase a little sooner. I think that would have been the play in retrospect, but easy for us to say, right? Yeah, I think T-Flame just hoping that maybe that the Ambassador would get up and leave and give us the early, the easy print instead. Uh, obviously, much less suspicious, but not cooperating, unfortunately. And Yaran manages, again, to salvage the win with the overtime shot there. Yeah, bear with me for just a second. Mild technical difficulties on my end. I guess, I guess what would you do there? Would you, would you uh, try to get the fingerprint earlier? Would you try to, you know, would you, would you think about maybe not going to bar, not trying to kill as much time, maybe one fake fewer? It's such a tough call to make, right? Um, and with hindsight, it's hard to tell exactly how much of a suspect we were. I mean, if we don't get shot without overtime, then this is the right play, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, uh, processor results, right? The age-old question. Of course, of course. And the other question is, of course, I mean, I think maybe the, the play there is just go force in, make it really, really obvious that you're not bugging, force the ambassador away and pick up that print instead. But Still overtime, yeah, you're in yeah. big trouble. I think the, the key is to get it going before overtime. I agree. I am all caught up again. It's going to be your Rand as Salmon on Modern. I like that the jacket matches the floors. I'm not sure if that means the jacket is gauche or the floors are. Maybe both. It's not an either or kind of thing. Your Rand is up 4-3, to three, though, after that last game. And spying on Modern in 3-2-1, playing it. I don't know. I mean, I admire the jacket. I just don't know if I would wear it. I mean, I think if anyone's going to pull it off, Salmon does a really good job. Um, I certainly could not. 
and I wouldn't want to try to. But yeah, very fashion forward is uh, salmon. Really putting the blazer and trailblazer. We have a flirt at the windows. Thirty-four percent. It's an it's a white test this time, so that's fine. But it's so early that I feel like the downside of the white test matters so little when you're so aggressive about getting it off. Yeah, we're gonna go idle here though, just in the empty conversation circle. And I assume we're gonna go back and flirt again now that our selection target is hanging out in another conversation circle. And that's gonna be the play. Yep, we're gonna go in, get another flirt. We're three flirting regardless here at this point, so it doesn't really matter. But we always like to see a green if we can hit it, and that's what we'll do. 85%. Yeah, take, taking a cue from our earlier competitors, and I think you can get away with it on Modern. And that is a green test, as you say, 85%. That's a very familiar number for spy party players. It's a white test flirt close and a green test combined. Usually more significant when it's the other way around because you're trying to two flirt and fail. I see it a lot, for example. But in this case, when it was white test first, you'll take it just fine. Either way, flirt's going to be done in three, one way or the other. And oh boy, look at this. T-Flame zooming in on the ambassador watching them very, very closely, but Yurand, nowhere near. Yurand just hanging out the window, and we're going into statues instead, picking up some early inspect progress. That's a little bit of an unusual choice, I think. Yurand not shying away from statues as much as some spies will do, but even so, we've seen a lot of statues already in this set from both players. As a matter of fact, an SCL uh, only completes inspect on Modern 30% of the time. Swaps more than they inspect on Modern. So you might want to look out for that inspect swap late. We might do both at once. So do still not done, but inspect a part of the way there. So as you say, early statue visit and early highlight to go with it, T-Flame. Standard statue highlights. Yeah, I mean, the mission progress so far is fine. With this point in the game, we still have plenty of options, plenty of time. We are going to need our double agent to settle down somewhere, though. And it looks like that's what Yaren's kind of planning, eyeing them down. We could go in and try and get a flirt instead, but we're just going to play things cool and wait it out. Well, your and I statues, T-Flame is really selling out on catching this ambassador, especially with a highlight right next to them. Double zoomed in on that ambassador at one point because they were in maybe the most buggable spot in the entire venue, which is that far right con conversation. There comes the contact. Several lowlights coming off. Three, four, four lowlights. That's not bad for Modern. Oh, Deep look at this. Safety off on Queen because she leaves shortly afterwards, and we've seen this from T-Flame. We've seen this suspicion, sort of, on people who catch their eye for some reason. This is the downside. This is the downside of kind of getting your teeth into people for small non-mission things, behavioral things, perceived etiquette things. The downside is now and then you sink your teeth into an AI instead, and the spy gets a free win, and that might be what's about to happen here with the Queen looking very busy. She's at the far right bookshelf. That's green. Another highlight comes off on the character next to her ponytail. Only Seduce is done with a minute and a half left, but inspects are partial, and we might not need to finish here. Don't know yet. Maybe, but Queen is just settling down, not doing anything else to induce a shot, and time is ticking down. We're down to a minute 15. All we have is slurred down another safety off on Queen. Okay, all right, we get it. Oh, angry camera shake. This maybe is not making sense to T-Flame. We're spending a lot of time looking for these little etiquette things, these blinks, the books, all that stuff, but Yuranda's staying away from them, which means, another way of saying, we're not being watched. It's okay so far for the sniper because we haven't done much, but if we do do something while we're staring at blinks, while we're staring at these other things... That might swing the game, and it's going to have to here, because finishing missions is going to be very difficult here. We have a drink, we have a delegate. That's the only way we can really finish here. We could contact bug delegate, boom, 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 all at once, or we can finish inspects, but we're going to have to delegate very, very quickly if we want to finish. Yeah, 35 seconds now. Yaran has really let the time slip away from that early mission progress. We're going to fire off the banana bread here, and that's all well and good. We'll also fire off, I assume, a delegate as we do it, and then go right into statues, maybe? That has to be the play. Yep, and that's going to be it's going to be inspect swap or no. Oh, oh it's Ponytail about to get shot for finishing briefcase. Finishing finishing fingerprint potentially. Here it comes. The safety was off. Watch it into the ambassador. We're not watching the spy at all. We're not watching the purloin at all. Not at all. And we delegated, by the way, to seek right after the sniper zoomed away. It's I pending. The, swing pending. the purloin has to take. If the purloin doesn't take, the game's gonna end. And if it does, it's gonna be overtime. We're at statues, though we might get shot. We're shot potentially for being a statues, are we? Here it comes! No! Double take! Double take! It's ponytail! It works! Yurand abuses T-Flame's attention elsewhere. Wow, T-Flame, not sure what happened at the end. So confused. We saw that with the camera shake in the middle of that. Just not sure who the suspects were. And finally, finally decides to take the wrong shot on Alice, who's just standing innocently at windows there at the end. Oh my goodness, my voice is gone. It was queen most of that game, as you could see. Then, ponytail late for the briefcase. Late for the briefcase, but was not shot for it, very tellingly. While that was happening, though, while that was happening, someone left our conversation after the contact went out, and while 
T-Flame was reacting to it, we delegated completely off screen. It was during a Zoom change. The delegate was not visible, and I don't think the Purloin was suspected at all. I think there's a decent chance that game ended and T-Flame had not known a Purloin had gone off. We were watching our little behavioral things. Now, we were still at statues at the end. That's the big risk for your end is you're at a mission site finishing inspects during overtime late in the game a long overtime too but i think it was just so so unexpected t flame clearly had a couple of big suspects was, who weren't finishing oh there was a slight pause there as well as the purloin hadn't taken so overtime didn't start immediately and i think that may have saved him because yeah. t flame had to be pondering what exactly could cause that either a swap a purloin or a time ad right and we're yep. just seeing that statue's finishing we're not swapping the statues were not seen swapped so T-Flame has to figure out exactly what happened there. And seeing Alice at window, potentially time adding, is really all that he could think of, I guess. Not just at windows. It's six seconds. Checks the watch. And I think that's it. We're thinking it's a green. It's a green. So you're expecting at that point, you're absolutely expecting that you're going to wait this out. But then despite not doing anything, overtime triggers, and it just doesn't make sense. But you've got to shoot someone. And what do you know? It's the person we were suspicious of last a little bit of help with the uh, with the watch check there from that AI, but on the other hand, I think more presence of mind would show you they could not have finished, and it just didn't make sense. And when it didn't make, it doesn't make sense. Somebody random gets shot. It was not the spy. That's an absolutely huge win for your who's going to maintain their advantage at least a little bit longer here. Five to three now. Now sniping on Modern. It's going to be T Flame as the spy as uh, Blink Twin, I believe. In three, two, one, playing it. All right, that was. An insane finish. We've seen, again, we've seen a bunch of insane finishes in this set already. That was no exception. And T-Flame just has to collect himself and recover here. Yeah, these have been very, very close games for both players. Incredibly marginal. I've been telling people, for anyone who would listen for a very long time, who wins at the high levels turns on the stupidest, stupidest, most random things. You work like crazy, and all that gets you is a 60% chance of winning instead of a 55% chance sometimes, and that you just hope it manifests over time. But game to game, it is absolutely crazy chaotic, and this has been no exception at all. It's still a tight match, and we still have no idea who's going to be facing Opie in the Winter Cup Finals. For those who are joining us late, Opie Wrights did win the first match against Screwloose 9-5, to and will face the winner of this live match right now, about a week from today. T-Flame, no progress early in the game. We've seen a lot of slow movement from T-Flame at the beginning of these games. I think probably watching the party and looking for frame targets. Any other reasons you might want to? Maybe just don't trust the sniper not to shoot a sieve? Yeah, I mean, again, I think this is pretty typical T-Flame spy play, to be honest. Um, he tends to just play a lot more deliberately, again, except for those occasional flurries of... Uh, green uh, swap. Do you think that's deliberate? Okay. Well, we've seen some action priority errors already in the set from T-Flame. Mm, good point. Um, However, this is the type of thing that T-Flame could be doing to sort of push the action, up the ante, and just in general, play faster. Yeah. I mean, he is capable of changing gears like this, and it's possible, especially as we go in next to the Ambassador, that that's what we're going to do. Maybe the is Smallman going to pick this up? Highlight Smallman's going to pick this up, but there's not going to be a lot of cover. You really want cover in there, so you can't see the fade without dedicating time oh, to it. We're now getting to distract from it. Yep, and Ponytail walks right by. Man couldn't have been it. If he oh, he, he, he lowlights him and sees the statue! He's got, he should be able to lowlight everyone else. Nope, takes a moment to remember who was there, and Uran's all over it. I would have said that was a mistake against any other player, but against Uran, sometimes they have such a solid script as Spy that they snipe the same way. And sometimes if you do something out of step, let's say breaking rhythm, as you might put it, uh, it can absolutely catch them off guard. But in this case, I think the, the banana bread messed us up because it made us look at Smallman for the lowlight and caused them to notice that the, per that the uh, swap had taken place. No, I agree completely. I think the low light, the banana bear was a huge mistake there. I think at, otherwise you put them into a 50-50 with small man already a highlight and hopefully get them shot. But in this case, we just brought it down to ourselves as the only suspect, drawing attention to the fact that the swap went off and making it clear, yes, I am the spy, please shoot me. Yep, I think if you wait a few more seconds, the swap is not noticed. Maybe Smallman stays in, and that's even better. But even if they don't, I think it delays the point from which the swap is noticed, too, at all. There's no reason to look at it otherwise. That is really, really big. That's going to make things much, much easier on your end. 6-3 now. We're still in Modern 2, playing as Disney in 3, 2, 1, playing it. This is getting away from T-Flame just a little bit. A little bit, but as we saw in the last set as well, a three-game lead is not insurmountable. Um... You know, there's less time here than there was for Screwloose, of course. But T-Flame just needs to win a sniper game here and then sweep the next venue, which I believe is his choice. And that's entirely within the realm of possibility. Yeah, but it starts with that sniper win. You're right. I mean, they're never out, especially when they've been playing competitive spy and sniper games the whole way. You don't need to change much to change the scoreline completely, actually, as a matter of fact. But 
seven to three against someone playing well, someone solid like your Rand, that's really, really tough because then you're relying on your Rand to make a lot of mistakes. It won't be enough to just play well and win if you're down seven to three. So you really need to lock this down and keep it close. No mission progress set from your Rand, by the way. Yeah, you said that at the very beginning. Yoran is the type of player where if he gets an early lead, he can just grind you out, grind out all these games, and pick up the win just through sheer attrition. And that's kind of what we're seeing so far. Yoran just playing solid spy party, picking up the wins that he needs to pick up, and just forcing T-Flame to keep up with him, to not make mistakes. Flirt at bar, finally, 25%. That's not great. We are going to pick up a delegate while we're here. Are we getting a drink with it? No, we're not. Interesting. Let's see what Yoran goes for. We're across, alone from the double agent. This is actually an ideal time to potentially contact and delegate, because we're all alone, and we're with a cast member. There's the contact, as I mentioned, white. And it looks like, oh, Teal's going to be maybe a little closer to us? Nope. There we go. We do indeed delegate. The con the double agent leaves right afterwards. In fact, the contact doesn't take, but we do delegate, therefore, to Teal instead, who's all alone with us. And this can be very hard to track sometimes if the sniper's not watching for it explicitly. Yep, absolutely true. Here comes the moment of truth uh, as Teal is going to be taking. Let's see what the reaction is from T-Flame as the purloin comes off. Immediate highlight on the Teal, and here comes the reaction. Low light there it is. Highlight. That is huge. That was the moment. We're either going to be really, really in the lead or way, way behind. And it turns out it's way, way behind. T-Flame, uh, <laughs> look, blinks are all well and good, but sometimes just noticing the hard tell has happened can win you the game just as often. <laughs> We've got it down to two, and there's just so little chance now of finishing. You are at the mercy of a jumpy sniper or an active AI, if not both. Yeah, and look at... Teal just hanging out in this conversation circle with one low light. We're in the full conversation circle next to our seduction target. I mean, we'll pick up another flirt here, and that's fine. But we're still going to need to pick up two more missions. We're going to need to keep Teal in for the banana bread. That has to be something that happens here. And then we need to find one more as one of two highlights, one of two non-low lights. We red flirt. Oh, oh and that, oh, that causes a bunch of uh, Christmas lights going off on the general here. This is going to really mess with my parsing data. t flame going <laughs> up and down. I'm not even kidding. I'm not exaggerating at all. That it does stay as a low light, though. I think t flame may be just bored. And this is actually something that happens when you have the party narrowed down. It's amazing how you can get kind of bored as Sniper. And that that maybe is your biggest challenge sometimes, is keeping interested in two characters doing nothing. t flame staring at Blinks here. Because why not? I mean, there's nothing else to look at. Oh, t flame shakes angrily. Or happily? Who knows? It looks the same. Hard to say. Neither of his two suspects doing anything. 99% flirt! <laughs> oh, no. I don't, know if, I don't know if it matters or not. By the way, trying to parse sniper motivation is like trying we're to figure out what, walk, what your dog we're, wants at any given time. We're going yeah, we're gonna, general. We're going to try to frame general. It's not going to work because it's already narrowed down. But that kind of makes sense at that point. Because Oh, no! Oh, what, what was that? What was that shake? T-Flame did not like this, I think, maybe. A little worried that perhaps they were wrong because they were already looking at general. So you're. I think that actually might have been our best chance. But... I, I don't know. What do you want, boy? What is it? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Okay. Uh. So, T-Flame manages to keep things close. <laughs> <laughs> T-Flame or wants to go outside, or there's someone who's fallen down a well. I don't know. Whatever it was, the shaking leads to victory. T-Flame, 6-4, to four, does pick up the win they absolutely needed to stay in this. But now we're going into pub. 3-5 in this one. So you can soft tail finish. This is not inspectless as it was in Spy Party Competitive League 6. You can finish with contact, inspect, and seduce. So this can be very, very treacherous. T-Flame playing as white dress on pub down 6-4. to four. This is for the finals coming up in 3, 2, 1, playing it. We are not about to clinch, but we're getting close. Absolutely. And this is about as polar and opposite from 4 of 8 modern as it gets. Um just the small size of the venue, um, having the soft tail finish available. It's its a much different style of play. Uh, T-Flame going to go jam himself into the statue here, look, trying to look as unsuspicious as possible next to Rocker and pick up the highlight for it in exchange. I mean, it's an interesting move because when you can soft tail finish, sometimes the question is only, is the sniper going to shoot whoever finishes? And if that's the case, you want to give them little reasons not to shoot you or to shoot two people who could be finishing at the same time, right? That's the tiebreaker. And that's not what I think is T-Flame is thinking, is that this is an AI kind of move. The question is, how does the sniper react? You're still at their mercy. If your Rand says, yeah, I don't care, you're all getting highlight for finishing inspects, and I'm going to treat you all the same, then it doesn't matter at all. But it is something that might convince them in the end. There's a contact, and that's going to knock out four, five people? Oh no, this wow. is not what you want. But we are, do have two missions done and no flirt done. I think we're rushing. Are we going to bug here? We could just bug here and try and finish right away. We're next to the ambassador? No, we don't take it. 
I think it might be a purloin instead. This is sort of. Can you rush on pub three five without bugging? We're about to find out. It's going to be a direct purloin, I think. I think this has to be a direct purloin. Otherwise, I'm not sure I understand what the move is. Let's see. Here, right. Here it comes. Are we trying to frame Irish? Is that what the plan is? I think it might be. I think it might be. That is a direct purloin indeed. And Uran says, nope, I am not falling for any of your tricks. You are shot. It is seven to four, just like that. And Uran right back where they were a game ago. Once again, not technically needing, but in practice, really needing this sniper win to keep pace. It's going to be Uran is teal pub again in three, two, one, playing it. Wow, T-Flame, I like the effort. That was sort of the mix-up play that we said have been saying all along that T-Flame is capable of. I like the thought. I like the plan of sort of rushing Yerand and forcing Yerand to take maybe an uncomfortable shot. But unfortunately, I just don't think that the purloin was disguised well enough. We really left ourselves the only suspect, but Yaren's doing the same thing here, going for the early inspect. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean, the rush is, people have been saying for a while, maybe a good play against a very methodical sniper like Yaren. That makes a lot of sense on paper. However, oh, here come the blinks again. It's blink cam from T-Flame. Does Yaren pass? Ah, T-Flame shakes his camera, which, <laughs> uh, T-Flame shakes his camera, which as we've established either means one thing or it's polar opposite. So I will not speculate. Um, yeah, look, up against a really methodical sniper like that, rushing can work really well, but I don't think it's going to work on pub very often. This is not necessarily the venue for it. No, I think you're right. And we've already seen T-Flame's adherence to blinks pay benefits once with that stealing the game based on this animation break earlier on. So clearly there's some benefits to it going on in the set, and Yaren has to be aware of that. But Yaren, not going to take the drink, just going to pick up this flirt instead, or maybe the banana bread. And that's going to knock out only two. Only two, but only, let me see here, three, four people have a reel, and we're one of them, and we're the only one with inspects. It could just be a talk or two. Here come the highlights. Yep, real contact. We've got the four real contactors highlight. We're probably going to remember Uran's the only one with those inspects. We have no flirts done, and our seduction target is just left, and I don't think we can squeeze in next to them either. So this could be trouble, too, because now, with this very narrowed down, and with the contact and inspects done for Uran, a couple of talks could easily get the shot. As soon as we leave, the seduction target does, but Uran reacts in time so that they don't chase them or waste the trip. We're going to go back to the same statue, and we're going to do the same kind of thing Tain Flame did. We're going to do some little AI things around statues to try to make sure we're not the one shot when we could be finishing. Time to see if T-Flame stares for Blinks again. But maybe having already passed the test once, T-Flame will not be watching. And it looks like that's not the play this time around. So we're just going to put the statue down and then hopefully chase down our seduction target. I would hope. But time has ticked down. We had a minute 40 before, plenty of time to pick up three flirts, or perhaps two. But now time is down. We're down to 80 seconds, and we still need all three flirts. Well, or two. Yoran did two flirt earlier, but now you need... Oh, the seduction target leaves the second we join! This is absolutely terrible. We are talking next to someone now, though, and I think like, we're already probably a pretty big suspect. I don't know if we can finish without this now. It might be Purloin or Bug, and the Ambassador is in a very bad spot to bug unless you catch the sniper on the rotation from the side, which is possible. What's it going to be, Yoran? Left or right? Gandalf, is it left or right? Inside to the Purloin or outside? Side to the bug, it's inside, potentially to the purloin. 45 seconds left on the clock. Delegator direct, which is it going to be? Another choice. Another bifurcated pass coming right up. Was there a fan oh. no talk? Maybe. There's the purloin. It is a direct purloin, just like the previous game. Highlights coming out. Has T-Flame seen? Have they reacted yet? I don't think they've seen it. I can't believe this is going to work. Direct purloin for your hand. Wins the game. Eight to four. How did that even happen? I'm so confused. I, I don't know. We're just not watching it. Look, my I've been saying it before. The minutia, it giveth and it taketh away. It wins you a game on reputation, but what are we staring at at the end other than a hard tell? It looks like we're staring at little etiquette things, perhaps instead a direct purloin with 39 seconds on pub from, I think, the only person with a real contact and inspects. And you purloin right under the sniper's nose. Wow. I Yeah, clearly we weren't the top suspect there. That's the only thing that could have possibly saved us. The laser hovering over pearls, chasing it down. But there were lowlights coming off before that even. I think there had to have been a no-talk or something. Right, so if you delay those lowlights just a second or two, you're probably thinking, okay, I've got the purloin narrowed down. They're trying to decide, is this the person who's finished with inspects or not? Maybe... Here, here's another way of looking at it. Did passing the blink test win us that game? Also a really good question. It is a good question. And this is the thing about blinks. Whether you think they're worth watching or not is arguable, certainly. And people, God knows, have argued about them. But 
even big proponents of links like Tiflame seem to agree that they are not dispositive. You can mimic them, not all characters do them, etc. And in this case, the question is really not so much why do you watch Blinks rather than one thing, but do you want to assign that much benefit to someone who does them correctly? And did the loss on gallery earlier convince them that they were not able to? Did that loss give your end this win? Good question, I think, if I do say so myself about my <laughs> own question. It's a good question because I don't know the answer to it. But I know this, Urand is one win away from joining OP Rights in the Winter Cup Finals. They are up 8-4, to four, and we are headed into High Rise, and we have caught up to the players now. We are waiting for them to synchronize. We're waiting for this mission loadout, too. This is going to be 3-5, to 3-5, five, three five, by the way, not 4-7 of seven on High Rise. 10 guests, 3 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. Here come the mission changes. Now, usually, the question is, do you want to leave on Purloin or Fingerprint? Fingerprint doesn't happen very often, but AIs can complete it. Purloin gives you another thing to rush late other than Bug, particularly if the sniper is very good at catching Bug, which I'll just say both of these gentlemen are. And it looks like right now, if the mission setup doesn't change between now and the start of the game, it's going to be Fingerprint off, Purloin on. Do you have a preference yourself? Uh, I generally go more for the Purloin myself. Um, you know, I've, I've been burned by just waiting for frame games far too often. So at this point, I generally prefer to put things in my own hands rather than relying on the AI and leaving myself more options to finish if necessary. But I'm also really not good at three of fives. So don't take my advice. <laughs> or mine for that matter, because there is no such thing as good advice here. It's very a player centric, opponent centric. We are about to get into this game here. It's going to be T Flame as Orange Sorry High Rise. It is indeed swap fingerprint microfilm off. This is more and more common, and I like it. I like the purloin, at least as a caster. There's a lot more going on. T Flame needs to win, needs four in a row to force tiebreak in three, two, one play in it there have been so so many close games here i think in the early going of this match either player could have come out with a lead but but since then you've just seen Uran make way fewer mistakes yeah and that's really what it comes down to right um this is not one of those games with crazy act i mean there has been crazy action don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but this really has been sort of a game of unforced errors it feels like both players have made them to be clear yaran with the animation break on the inspects and t flame doing with just wrong shots here and there but in general it's just been Really clean play by Yerand. Yeah, I wonder if that if that blink stuff ended up being a net draw. You lose one game to win one later, maybe potentially. Yeah, and I, you know, Yerand making me look smart, right? Jumping out to that early lead on those really marginal games that could have gone either way. But since then, fewer mistakes. That's why the lead for Yerand is dangerous. That's why you need to keep pace or take a lead because he's not usually going to give you many opportunities late, and he hasn't here. He's been very on brand. T Flame, another white flirt, by the way, 34%. But our seduction target goes and gets a briefcase and comes right back. This is very nice. This one's green too, 85%. And this is significant because you can rush a soft tail finish on high rise and cause people to hold. The dynamic is actually kind of similar to Pub, which we just saw. Unfortunately, though, the time is ticking down. We're kind of already close to past the point where we can sort of do the just center statue rushdown without really inducing a shot and t flame just hanging out here at the painting pad not getting any mission progress still i guess trying to just reset that flirtation cooldown so we'll go finish that but we still need to finish the two more missions and i'm not sure that we have the option at this point there's the seduce. Yeah, I think the rush, I think being aggressive on the flirt makes some sense, at least because, again, you can finish here with around two minutes. If the ambassador's not in a buggable position, your rush options here are fairly limited as a spy. But with Purloin as well, you could easily contact into Purloin and finish with a minute 40 left. And that can still be very powerful. Because the flirt went so well, because your seduction target came back to you, and because you were aggressive about the last one, it gives you options. But we have not been offered a drink yet. Is it about to happen? It is. I don't think we requested it, though, and we just reject it. No Purloin there. We had kind of a little bit of a chain, including Small Man, who is a highlight just for being Small Man. Yeah, I think that would have been a good choice. That would have been very, very decent. We're going to fake, though, instead and give off a couple lowlights. But more to the maybe... point, the only people who have real are out front. Yep, that could be a big deal. Especially if we can maybe frame one of them with a purloin. That could pay big dividends down the line. But we're going to go in instead and just kind of hang out here. Maybe fire off another banana bread. It's a real... And we look really suspicious for that. Yes, yes. We switched conversations to join. But and it's a purloin point. out front, back to the sniper. But Durand had zoomed out. But the ambassador is so safe that there's nothing else to be watching for. Cast member rejects afterwards. That will at least put us some distance between us and this purloin. But we need rejects from non-cast members what we really need. Here it comes. Is General going to take? He does. He does. We're being watched. The fade is not seen. It's completely behind the general. We have to decide. We haven't even seen if it's gone yet, but we see just in time and take the shot. It's your end into the finals. Opie your end. Winter Cup 2021 finals next week.
It's going to be a classic. I mean, Yer and Obi, both top-tier players, both shown so much in this Winter Cup. It's going to be a fantastic set. Oh, that little bit of panic from T-Flame there. Trying to see the list just in time, and look at this. Mission win countdown. He still had plenty of time, as it turned out. Could not see. It's actually, this is one of the reasons Perloin's decent on High Rise. There are several, several places where you or the AI can take where, the, where the, either the waiter or a person or both or the rotation of the tray will block that fade. That's what happened here. It was down to a 50-50, but here's the thing. T-Flame had a game where two people could be finishing or only one person could be finishing of the two who could have done the action. He shot the one. He decided not to shoot. Uran just had the exact same choice. A mission has taken place. A purloin again, tray instead of bar, but this time I'm going to shoot the person who could be finishing and it's the right call for Urand on both ends. 9-5 to five in the first match, 9-4 to four in this one, but some really marginal individual games in there. Oh yeah, I mean, both T-Flame and Screwloose put up incredible fights, like their games lost on the thinnest of margins, and really, in on a different day, in a different match, things have gone way, way differently for both players. So kudos to both of them for really making very enjoyable sets.